Hey y'all, welcome back. As promised, I went ahead and took a look at all the sneakers that I picked up this year. Took me a while, but I narrowed it down to the top 15 sneakers that released this year that I was actually able to pick up. Obviously, there's a bunch of stuff that released in men's sizes or I just wasn't able to grab um, certain collabs that came out, but um, I guess we'll take a look at it now. I wanted to go ahead and preface this video before I started that the sneakers I'm about to show you aren't ranked 15 to 1. I just picked my top 15. It was too hard for me to rank, you know, this is my favorite release of the year, but I did grab 15 that definitely make the top and were the most memorable to me. And also these are all in my opinion. I guess to start, I'll go with something that I picked up rather early in the year. Um, it is my iridescent Nike Air Force Low ID. I was super pumped when during All-Star Weekend they announced that they were gonna release the iridescent pattern ID because it is definitely one of my favorite materials. For those who have followed me for a while on Instagram, it kind of all started with the Air Max Roshi Run Woven. It released um, in 2013 and just fell in love with that material. Carried on to when they released the Women's Blazer. And the one thing I do like about the Air Force is that they gave me the option to do the Rainbow Soul on the bottom. The Rainbow Soul, to me, just kind of brought the shoe together. The white sole's nice, but it just made it look really clean. I know a lot of people didn't like it, but definitely, definitely topped the shoe off. Um, I just topped it off with white laces. I didn't want to do anything crazy. I saw some other people who did other color of laces and definitely was happy that I chose the white. Um, like I said, I guess I didn't say, but I'll say it now. Um, I chose the all-star print in the inside for this pair and my high pair that I have, but the mid pair I actually didn't do until I think I did it the re-release or the second re-release. They've done it three times now and um, they didn't have that option. So my mid pair just has a white insole, which also looks nice, but definitely, definitely head turner and deserving of a top spot on my countdown. Next up on my list, in no specific order, is the Ronnie Feig Puma Secura. I was able to pick up the um, R698. They came out with two different pairs. A mid, I'm not sure on that model, but um, definitely that was a cool shoe. I haven't picked it up. I've been thinking about it. Just haven't seen a good price on eBay yet. Um, but now we'll talk about this pair. When I saw this shoe, I had to have it. I love the off-white suede and the maroon on the toe box. Thought it was just gorgeous with the gradient pattern, how it comes back. So nice. Um, I do like that they chose to do a maroon sole on the bottom because it doesn't get quite as dirty as a typical like white sole. Um, Ronnie Feig definitely did his thing with this shoe. It came with three different laces a maroon pair. Definitely might try that out. That looks really nice. Um, but I've only really worn them with this white pair. And they came with this pair as well of laces. I'm not too big of a fan, but these might look nice in another pair of shoes. I have a few different rose gold shoes that, that could definitely top it off. Um, the inside actually is really nice too. Let me see if I can yank this out. Mm, I can't, but I'll try to get closer here. It has like a quilted inside. If you can't see it, I'm sorry, but I tried. <laughs> um, but yeah, overall, um, really loved this shoe. Glad I was able to find it. I didn't get it on the site. I can never ever get anything on kids for some reason, but um, was able to track down a pair for not too bad over retail, but um, definitely love the detailing. The Sakura uh, flower on the back, super nice. Hey. Next on my list is the Poor Ween Leather Stan Smiths. These came out around October time frame this year. I love this shoe. The leather not only smells like real leather, um, 
but just the quality of the shoe is amazing. I was worried when I saw the shoe that they wouldn't be comfortable, um, but they actually put this nice um, insole to it where it has padding in the back um, so it doesn't rub or slip and you almost probably could wear it without socks with all the padding in the back, but the details, obviously, I've worn them. Um, the details are so nice. Um, as you can see, the Adidas Stan Smith logo is lasered into the front of the shoe on the tongue. And it's pretty minimal. And other, other, there's not huge Adidas signs, just a little bitty, the flower on the back and then on the sole as well. But overall clean shoe. I have the high as well. Um, but I think I like the low better. I'm a, more of a low top sneaker lover, but definitely a cool shoe. Next on the list is the Flyknit Air Max Multi. Um, was super happy when these released that it wasn't actually as hard as I thought it'd be to get them. They did sell out rather quickly, but it wasn't, wasn't super hard. So I was definitely happy about that. Everyone knows Flyknit's super comfortable, coupled with this Air Max, full Air Max unit on the bottom. This is like walking on clouds, super comfortable. I always bring these when I travel, just because they're easy to slip on. I don't even untie them ever. I just slip them in and out. Um, you can wear them with or without socks. Just kind of depends on if you like the feel of the Flyknit. Um, I do like also a cool detail. I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it has a gradient um, from black to white on the back. I thought that was a cool detail. They could have done it all black or white, but definitely adds a little special aspect to the shoe. But hopefully you can get an idea of the details there. They made a men's colors, colorway as well, but uh, definitely like the, the women's better. Another great pickup is the Sacconi Scoops. This is actually the second pair that released they released two pairs, the mint chocolate chip and the strawberry vanilla. I chose the strawberry vanilla as my favorite of the two just because I like the pink a little bit more, more than the mint, but they definitely both are really dope with great quality and design. I um, just want to show you the box. It has a little ice cream spoon on the front. With, I think these details are cool because it reminds me of old school ice cream shops. Um, definitely put a lot of work into that. Sakoni does amazing with their collabs. Um, and then when you open the box on the inside, you see the waffle cone paper, really, really cool. And then when you get down to the shoe, the details are just as amazing. Um, suede pretty much all over. You got pink with hints of red and the kind of off white, I don't really know what kind of color that would be, but it makes it look cool. Creamy white, brown, taupe. Yeah, don't know, but we'll go with it. It definitely pulled it together. Um, the scoop spoons are in the front of the shoe as well. Hopefully you can see that on there. Um, and the comfort of the shoe is unreal too. Very, very comfortable. And actually I'm gonna get down into the shoe here so I can show you the insole because it's definitely, definitely really, really cool too. Um, you have the insole here has the ice cream dripping down with the waffle cone. Really, really cool. And then this shoe also came with three different laces. Um, I really like this lace here, this yellow one. I might put that one on the shoe at some point. I've worn it with the ones that's on there. But three different laces, but overall really cool shoe and was super happy to pick this one up. This one was a lot harder to get than the mint as well, but really excited about it. So yay me. For my second Puma on the list, I have the one of her collabs this year, Vashti times Puma. She did some really cool shoes this year. Very, very slept on, um, but all of them great quality, and I like them personally. But it is the, I don't even know what this material is called. I just call it the Zeno material because Adidas was the first one to do it. But it is a reflective material, kind of shining the sun super slept on. I think personally they're cooler than the Xeno Fluxes. One, I like this model better than the ZX Flux. Um, more comfortable and just a cuter shoe in my opinion. 
you probably don't like the word cute, but I'm a girl, so I'm going to use it. Um, I like on this sneaker particularly, they have the lavender detail. Lavender is definitely one of my favorite colors to wear. Super feminine, but not too childish in my opinion. And as you can see, it has the Vashti on the tongue. And then, yeah, super, super cool. Um, definitely check out my Instagram. I have pictures on there so you can see the reflective um, material, but it's literally all over the shoe. And then even the silver is 3M. So overall, definitely a favorite of the year. Next up, we got another collab. It is the Concepts SB, the SB Low. Um, yeah, I'm going to show the box first because the box is really cool. All the sneakers that released with Concepts in their SB um, collab this year, were all the boxes were really cool if you were able to get the special boxes. This is really hard to open, bear with me. But the inside's really shiny too, by the way. Um, yeah, this whole shoe, once I saw, you know me, the iridescent material, had to have it. Um, the inside has a cool quilted gray material, has a hair on this side and a skull on this side and the insole, um, blue tongue and a red tongue. I don't know why I crossed my arms like that, but oh well. Um, also I didn't really like these personally. I'm not a big skull person. I know a lot of people are, but it's not really my type of fashion, but they came with skull lace locks. Very, very cool detail if you're into that thing. So you could put them on the, ooh. <laughs> you can put them on the tip of the front of your shoe. Um, and it has a clear sole as well. Obviously I've worn them. They came with white, red, and blue laces. Um, yeah, overall really cool shoe. Liked it, was glad I was able to find it and Definitely, definitely very unique. Um, I got a lot of compliments when I wore it the first time by people who didn't even like sneakers. So, really a head turner. So, if you can find it, definitely recommend it. Next on the list is um, a pair of Anevas. I picked up a lot of different Anevas this year. Um, and I chose this pair because of the color. I don't really have a sneaker that's in this kind of... It's a bright orange, but it's still kind of borderline pastel. Um, these shoes are so comfortable. The woven material feels like you're wearing like nothing on your foot, to be honest. Um, and then another really cool thing that most people don't know about this shoe is it has the 3M details on the toe. You probably won't be able to see this, but there's 3M details on the toe right there and a 3M, uh, yeah, triangle on the back. So definitely really cool. Um, like this pair um, and I've worn them a bunch of times and I definitely should clean them but I'm lazy so cool um, but yeah it's up there next on the list is the Air Jordan 4 Pearl this is a GS only release but they did release them in the extended GS sizes that they started doing this year they go up to nine and a half I believe which is a actual nine and a half in men's. If you don't know the difference between, actually this is a good time to talk about it because I get it asked all the time. So the difference in sizing. So GS and men's sizes are literally the same sizes. You don't have to go up or down. However, women's sizes, you do have to go up. So women, so if you wear, say me, I wear a five and a half GS. Sometimes five depends on the shoe. So if I wear a five and a half um, GS size, that will be a seven women's, so a size and a half, and that's the same for a men's, so if you wear a men's five and a half, you wear a women's seven. Hope that clears things up, asked all the time, so yeah, cool. Anyway, <laughs> back to the shoe, it is the Jordan 4 Pearl, like I said, released during All-Star Weekend, I was lucky enough, Anthony, who used to run Kicks for Chicks, was able to pick this pair up for me. He went up there for All-Star Weekend in New York. Thank goodness he grabbed my pair. Um, I ended up grabbing a pair for my mom as well. I like to treat her with sneakers every once in a while. Um, got that pair through J-Tips, I believe, on Instagram. 
super cool guy to work with, super legit. Um, but yeah, the details on the shoe, iridescent, don't need to talk about it again, love the iridescent material. Um, the quality on the inside of the shoe, super soft, very buttery. Um, and I love that they did the tan color on the midsole and not all white. I think it blended well with the shoe. And obviously, I've worn them a few times. Not as many as probably would have liked to. Um, we'll pull them out definitely a lot more. Wish I would have got two pair of them. Then I would have probably worn them a lot more. But they do crease a little bit on the toe. But the iridescent material is prone to that. So overall, very well done and de deserved a spot in my top this year. Another great pickup, in my opinion, this year is the Nike Air Max 1 City Pack. This is the Paris. There was the London, Paris, Shanghai, Milan, New York, and Tokyo. Six. Yes. Um, I picked up the Paris and the Milan. The other ones are really cool, and I probably will eventually get them, to be honest, if I find them for a good price. Um, I just really love anything with a floral print. A lot of my friends make fun of me <laughs> because I have so much floral floral pattern clothes, but it's just me. Um, but this pair in specific, it was my favorite because of the colors. Um, these are actually pretty much the colors that Pantone announced were the colors of the year for 2016, so definitely will be wearing a lot of this. But um, that rose pink and then the blue really looks nice. It looks very Paris in my opinion, Marie Antoinette to be honest, um, but yeah, it's Air Max 1 Ultra actually, I misspoke. It's different than just an Air Max, they are comfortable. I would have liked honestly the materials to have been a little nicer, um, especially for the price point that they were at, but can't complain too much. Um, won me over with the pattern, probably would have bought it if it was more expensive to be honest, but um, really really cool details. I'll Bring it up a little closer. And then the bottom, just a white and pink. Dirty, like all the other shoes I've shown you. They obviously don't sit on the back of my wall all year. I wear them, get lots of use out of them. Wear them every day to work, so definitely a cool shoe to add to your collection. Now we have the Run Disney collab with New Balance. They do these for every marathon that Disney has. And they have a few different pairs out there. I have the Mickey Mouse, or not Mickey Mouse, I have Minnie Mouse and Cinderella, and I picked up the Tinkerbell pair this year. Um, so let's get right to it. But I don't, do I show y'all front? There you go. Um, so when you get down into it, you pull it out and it's solid green because Tinkerbell wears green. Um, really, really was impressed with this shoe. It's definitely a different model, but really comfortable. If you are a runner, would definitely be really comfortable. Um, but to get into the details, all of the details on their clabs are really amazing. I'm going to scoot closer so you can see them. But so you start, it's all green, has um, a little lighter yellow, yellowish green on the in, the midsole with the sparkle glitter on it and then on you have the puff ball for the front it's a little clip on so you can you can take it off you don't have to have it on there but to me it makes a shoe because Tinkerbell actually has a little puff ball on her her slippers she wears so that comes off has a little I think that's a tulip that's what it looks like to me a tulip on the front um, let me put that back on. Green laces, which actually are gradient laces. A lot of my shoes this year apparently that I like have gradient. And then on the inside of the tongue it says all you need is faith, trust, and pixie dust. That is a line from Peter Pan. Also another cool detail you put on the laces are wings. The other shoe has a wing as well so when you wear them both shoes have little wings. Really really cool. And then on the back one more awesome, unique detail. Actually, cool. Two new details. I never noticed that was there. But um, you have Tinkerbell on the back. 
And you also have, which I just noticed, Tinkerbell's signature and a Mickey Mouse head right there. Hopefully you can see all those. But really cool. Um, also, something that's another unique detail that you won't be able to see on this, it actually glows in the dark. So when it glows in the dark, it has these swirly, swirly patterns. That's what we can call them, swirly patterns. Really, really cool. Um, was happy to pick this up. Now for the story about these. So I saw these release and I didn't run the marathon this year. And that's the only place you can buy them is, is, is at Disney World when there's a marathon going on. If you w run the marathon, they give you a ticket to buy the shoe. Um, so since I didn't run the marathon, I'd gone on eBay, bought a shoe, and <laughs> two weeks later the shoe hasn't arrived. I'm freaking out. I'm like, well, I want this shoe. And so I contacted the seller and she was like, I dropped the package off. Sometimes they just don't, tra it's, it was USPS and like sometimes they don't track it. So, um, went, waited a few more days and was like, can you contact USPS? And she went and contacted him. They ended up losing the package. So she ended up, thankfully, buying another pair from a different eBay seller then shipping me that pair she bought. She actually lost money, so she ended up doing the right thing, and it worked out, but I ended up taking, like, a month and maybe a week to get the shoe. So I'm a patient buyer, so that's good. And things happen, so no no bad blood there, but that's my long story on how I picked this one up. Winding down our list, we have the Anniversary Air Max 90, the velvet pair. Um, you want to go? You want to go? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> we have the Velvet Pair. They released a lot of different pairs this year for the anniversary, but this is by far my favorite of the ones released. It's pretty much just all velvet with infrared detailing. The velvet's perfect. Like, it reminds me of when I did gymnastics, my leotards, <laughs> to be honest. That's what it reminded me of. It made me very nostalgic, but um, definitely, definitely cool shoe. Everyone, when I wore it to work, was like, oh my gosh, those are so cool. So these are people that don't like sneakers. I work in an office, so. Next, we have the Reebok Instapump Fury collab they did for the Cinderella remake they did this year. Disney did. The real life one, I guess you could say. This one has iridescent as well. Apparently I picked up a billion iridescent shoes, who would have thought? Um, details on these are phenomenal. I saw these, I believe I saw them maybe around May. And overseas, I think Tokyo Instagram, I saw them and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to have those. I have a really long story about how I end up getting them, but we're not going to do that today. Maybe I'll review these a little bit more later on down the road and we can go into that because it's really long. But going into the details here, iridescent all up there. The pump part is really cool. It has a clock about to strike midnight obviously Cinderella themed and then the toe caps just all sparkly but it's not the same iridescent but it still has an iridescent look if you're out in the sun or even if that you can catch light I don't know if that's going to show on the camera but you get the idea and on the back it has a butterfly if you've seen the release of the Cinderella movie there's a lot of butterfly themes in the movie um, so that's why they put that detail there it also came with the insoles of this pair aren't super fancy but they they came with another pair of insoles that have the butterfly butterfly themed on there as well so it was super pumped I got these they sold out really fast but was able to grab my pair so to two left now um we'll go into this one it is the Yeezy Moon Rock this shoe has a long story as well so we're not gonna do that today um, but super happy I was able to grab this. It's my first actual, not my first Yeezy because I have the Bape Kanye collab. That's definitely <laughs> way before these. 
um, but my first Yeezy 350 and my first Yeezy Adidas. Um, the 750s only come in a size 6 and I'm worried that they'll be too big. I did like the gray pair um, and wouldn't mind actually trying one on. I don't know if I'd pay resale price, but definitely do like that shoe. I wish it came in smaller sizes. My pair is a size 5 and I'm really glad I got it. I know a lot of people said it's basically like a Roshi and I mean if you want to say that it's close but there is a lot of difference. In my opinion it's way more comfortable than a Roshi. I even think a lot of other shoes are more comfortable than a Roshi. Roshis are comfortable don't get me wrong but um, very very different. Very cool. I've worn them probably two times now but definitely will be trying trying strong word there to pick up more Yeezys in the future, especially the 350s. Very, very comfortable shoe, and they come in my size, so there you go. I said I wasn't going to rank the releases on my countdown, but this one is by far my favorite release of the year. Just down to the details on the shoe, the packaging, everything was top-notch here. So I'll get right into it. It is, I don't know if you can see this. <laughs> and it's heavy. It is the Epitome Ciccone Righteous One collab. Now before I get into the shoe, this is Epitome. It's a store in Atlanta, Georgia. It is um, right across from this iconic fish. It's literally a huge uh, turquoise fish. And that's pretty much, they base it off the fish and um, Middle Eastern beliefs. So just to get right into the shoe now. Um, I was actually able, I know I'm kind of rambling, but stick with me. I was able to get this wooden box. This wasn't a box that was given with every, to everyone. Um, there are 19 of 20 and the story behind me getting the shoe is really cool. Someone was just nice enough to pick it up for me. I paid for it, but, um, they were already going to stand in line for their pair and was able to get me not only the shoe, but the box. So Definitely a win-win and super happy that people are willing to help me out. Definitely would do the same, but was stoked about that. So the tradition, in the special box, it also comes with a golden pillow and the epitome bag. That might actually come with all of them. Not sure. Don't remember, but epitome bag. Now getting into it. I don't know if I said it before, the collab's actually called the Righteous One. Um, there's a symbol on the shoe, I think it's called the Hamsa, H-A-M-S-A. -A. It's a hand, um, but it basically protects you against the evil eye, at least that's what Middle Eastern culture believes, and um, that's why they, it protects you and leads you on the path of the Righteous One, pretty much. So even when you open up the, sh the box, the paper is super detailed, gold, gold, the E for the store, and then just the flower prints, really nice. He even gave me the receipt, so I know it's real. And then, so we get into the shoe. A beautiful turquoise color, and then it has suede, premium leather, to pretty much make up the whole shoe and on the toe box it is fish scales to go off the statue it has um, gold on the midsole here with gold detailing on the eyelets and then like I said on the tongue I don't know if y'all will be able to see it it's the hand with the epitome logo Ciccone on the back it also has fish scale detailing on the back as well and then the bottom, one of my favorite parts, it's clear, but it has gold flecks, translucent, I guess you could say, with gold flecks. Really makes the shoe pop, in my opinion. No one sees the bottom of the shoe, but it's an important detail to me. And they also, Nike did a few shoes at the end of the year with the sparkles on the bottom, which was cool. And, <coughs> sorry, I have a cold, so <laughs> this has been hard. But um, And then another cool thing about the shoe they actually put the fish that I was speaking about on the insole. 
And then the insole's actually memory foam, so super duper comfortable. Um, I wore them once only because I'm nervous that they'll get dirty. The teal suede, I wish I had two pair. But yeah. One more detail is the extra laces that it came with. I have the traditional just teal laces, but it came with these two as well. This one's really cool. Really, really cool. So that wraps up my top 15 of 2015. I hope y'all enjoyed it. But to be honest, this was the hardest thing for me to do to narrow down my top pickups. I don't know how many shoes I picked up this year, but to pick my favorites is so hard. It's literally the hardest thing you could tell me to do. But I was able to do it, and I think I ended up doing a good variety. I had all different brands. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. For those of you that are still here, I wanted to say thank you for sticking through the video with me. And feel free to like and subscribe. Definitely leave me some comments in the bottom so I know what videos you'd like to see in 2016. I wanted to say I wish all of you a happy new year and see you soon. Bye.